Today's date is a date shrouded in deception. For you see, the celebration of the birth of the Savior of the predominant religion in the world it's really not today it really happened at a different time but the changing of the date was in order to accommodate different groups so that they would accept the religion of the disciples who lived in Judea almost 2,000 years ago And there's a reason why that deception is unquestioned. Even though the church fathers and people knowledgeable know that it's a deception. Because he wasn't born on this date. And that is because the whole of Christianity is shrouded in deception. Well, you see, no Jew, no self-respecting Jew, would deny a commandment of the Torah. And Jesus himself says he doesn't come to abrogate any of the Torah. Well, you see, he ate a Passover meal. That was the Seder. That was the offering of the sacrificial lamb. And he ate only kosher. And he practiced what most other Jews practiced. And the differences between himself and the so-called Pharisees were very few, for he was a Sadducee, but an extreme form of Sadducean ideology. It was called the Essenes. And the Essenes essentially believed in purity, celibacy, and shared wealth. They didn't believe that a person should have his own thing. It's precisely this kind of ideology that shows itself today as socialism and it is the driving ideology of many of the church fathers in many of the countries of the world. But it is not Torah. Nonetheless, the followers of Jesus practiced Torah. They ate kosher, they circumcised their sons at age eight, and they engaged only in modest behavior, something that today would seem to be extreme. They were pious, they prayed, and they studied. And what did they study? They studied the books of the Torah. And they studied in Hebrew, unlike the church fathers and their students. The reason why it changed was because Saul of Tarshish found that it was more convenient to expunge the bulk of the commandments from the requirement of peoples and say that you could be Jewish without having to keep kosher. You could be Jewish without having yourself as a male circumcised at age eight days. You could be Jewish without having to study Torah all the time. You could be Jewish without having to wear tefillin the phylacteries, and the tzitzit. Nor did you have to behave as modestly as did the Jews of those times. Because all you had to do was believe, believe in a Savior, believe in a Messiah. For it was the Messiah who got your forgiveness. Now we Jewish people, we're very stubborn lot. We don't believe, and we will never believe, that the Messiah brings you forgiveness. For it is only God who forgives. And God forgives when a human being has a change of heart and behaves accordingly. Well, you see, God's arms are always open. But you must take the first step. You must open up your heart like the point of a needle. And then God will follow and bring you through a pathway that's as wide as the doors and the opening of the temple. A little tiny hole in 
the stubbornness of your heart opens the person up for an eternal life which comes through God's forgiveness but not through a savior the Messiah comes to inspire to instruct to change the world to make the world a better world to give man the opportunity to grow and to learn to study to know God's ways but the Messiah brings no forgiveness forgiveness comes from the actions of a man or a woman and that is why the whole process is a process shrouded in deception my brothers and sisters out there study the Torah Torah demands action not just faith and even though it says that the righteous establishes all on faith faith requires action for if you don't act then you really don't believe and if you believe you will do that's just the sum total of it how many commandments are there 613 for the Jew for the Gentile there are seven major categories with many details these are called the laws of the sons of Noah but make no mistake about it December 25th is a day shrouded in deception.